<laughs> to be honest, I don't know how good the show is going to be tonight. <laughs> but then again, I never do know. I never do know. It's not like I have a plan. Like the crap ones, I don't like, you know, when the, the crap show happens, I go, ah, exactly as I planned, a crap show. <laughs> I never plan for the show to be crap, just sometimes it is. <laughs> Maybe many times. <laughs> anyway, it's day, what day is it, Tuesday? It's day two of my Olympic boycott. <laughs> and I've got Olympic fever. <laughs> I have, I've, I've been watching the Olympics all the time, except, you know, only the parts that are on CBS. <laughs> but it's weird, because the Olympics are on NBC, and I'm like, what is this strange logo? Oh yeah, NBC, I haven't seen this in years. <laughs> Do, 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 and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, Friends and uh, the other one? <laughs> Seinfeld, Seinfeld, I was there. Remember that? Ah, oh, good times. <laughs> What's the deal with that? I don't know, Jerry. <laughs> that was awesome, that show. <laughs> It'd have been better if it was on CBS, obviously, but... But if it was on CBS, it would, you know, someone would die every week and then good-looking people would solve the mystery. <laughs> oh, do you know who's on the show tonight? You're going to when you hear this. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. <gasps> and Kate Mara's here. We'll be right back with the big Olympic show, everybody. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Corona. Kick back and relax with an ice cold Corona. Relax responsibly. Come on, relax. That's enough. Let your applause die away naturally. I tell you, it was frightening, the noise of that enthusiastic and genuine applause as I came out. It was almost as if the audience was giving me thunder. It was almost as if a professional warm-up comedian had said to a badly paid studio audience, me thunder. I know. I don't know what it means either. It is a great day for America, everybody. It is a fantastic day for America. Why? Well, because it is. Um, we got beaches, we got strip malls. It's a great country. Um, <laughs> Take that, countries that are landlocked with no convenient shopping. <laughs> I, uh, it's a great day for America, not such a great day for Tom Cruise. Oh! oh. oh. Don't, oh yeah, you don't know! <laughs> he has been replaced in a movie by Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I know! The producers decided that he wanted to go with a star that men lust after instead of a star that men lust after. <laughs> That's right, I kid Tom on, but he's adorable. <laughs> John McCain has been accused of stealing policy ideas from Wikipedia, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I think this is right. Everybody knows McCain doesn't know how to use the internet. <laughs> accuse him of that. And Barack Obama today pledged that he won't raise taxes on anyone over the age of 70. And McCain said that Obama was just pandering to the youth vote. <laughs> These youngsters gotta pay tax! And the Olympics are still on. Will they ever end? 
I want TV to get back to normal. I miss all those great NBC shows like... All right. Uh... <laughs> anyway, I said it last night. I, I personally am boycotting the Olympics. And across America today, people are joining. Today, only a billion people watched. <laughs> I'm still not watching the world, although I did last night and the night before <laughs> and Saturday and the opening ceremonies were like, what? <laughs> anyway, I said last night, and maybe I spoke too soon, I said last night that swimming wasn't a real sport. But after careful consideration and a, a flood of emails protesting, <laughs> about three, you know, America hasn't been this angry since I tried to grow a moustache. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I've changed my mind. Swimming is a real sport, okay? But it's a crap sport. <laughs> swimming is the hockey of sports. There, I said it. I don't like the swimming, but you know what's weird? I'm watching it. Now, when do I don't watch international swimming? It's like every four years, the Olympics come on, I'm like, oh, great, the swimming. When else do I? I don't watch swimming during the year. It's like, oh, better get home. Time for the swimming. <laughs> on the other side, oh great, swimming! But now I'm like, how's the swimming? Anyway, I'm ignoring my own boycott, I'm watching the swimming. Damn you, Michael Phelps. Have you seen Michael Phelps? He's won three gold medals so far. I'd like to see him swim with that big, no. Don't encourage him. Three medals. I'd like to see him swim with those big medals around his neck. Big, heavy things will pull your lower body under in the water. Trust me, I know this. It's true, it's true. I once did the backstroke in a black speedo. People thought there was a shark in there. Well, I don't know if they thought... They, they ran screaming from the water is what I'm saying. I have to admit, Michael Phelps is spectacular. He really explodes out of these blocks. Do we have a clip from last night's uh, heats? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh. go for the goal. USA! USA! Anyway, the swimming... The swimming burns a lot of calories. Michael Phelps has to eat 8,000 calories a day. I know! I do that too, just in case I have to go swimming quickly. His diet is incredible, though. He has fried egg sandwiches, pancakes, burritos, uh, spare tires, tin cans, bits of old stroller, wheels, anything that's lying around, old broken toys. He'll eat anything. And that's just when he's on land, when he's in the water. He's got, his, he's got his mouth open and it will take an entire schools of fish to... Ah. I was in a restaurant once, I saw him eat live chickens like popcorn. That's how... Bah, 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 bah. All right, I made that up. I never saw it. Anyway, he's trying to... Michael Phelps is trying to win eight gold medals, which is one more than Mark Spitz won for swimming back in 1972. Did we have a picture of Mark Spitz? There you are. <laughs> There he is, that's him. Ah, oh, yeah, break me off a piece of that, he said. <laughs> Let me see Mark's bits again. You know, athletes were thinner then, weren't they? I mean, look, he's quite thin. Athletes now are all like, oh, I feel the burn! And he's kind of like, hello. <laughs> and he five medals of that, you know, the seven that he won, just for the moustache. He got, Mark Spitz got rid of his moustache in the 80s, although, to be fair, the moustache said that it got rid of him. <laughs> I've had enough of your lip. <laughs> That's right, Mark Spitz's moustache was French. Very few people knew that. <laughs> Do you know the Olympic swimmers, they shave their entire bodies. Shave them! I did that once. <laughs> I did. It, it didn't make me swim like a dolphin, it made me look like a dolphin. <laughs> I still have the blowhole. <laughs> I, I don't... I still have the blowhole. And my memories. Call me Flipper. I... I... 
<laughs> the swimmers, the way they, they shave their bodies because uh, they say that the shaving reduces the drag and makes you go faster. I just think they like the silky smooth feeling. <laughs> do you know what else they do? And this is true, I'm not making this up, right? This is true, this is what the swimmers do. While they practice, they sometimes wear stockings. <laughs> Swimming suddenly becomes something I might be interested in. <laughs> Really? Yeah. They say wear stockings because they say it increases the drag. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Wearing stockings always increases the drag. You really want to increase the drag, you get a little sundress and a pair of heels. Wow! <laughs> All right. You guys take a break. We'll be right back with more women. You catch me deep in thought. I, I, sometimes when I'm thinking, I like to go up and walk around a bit and pretend I'm in a film. <laughs> a film where a guy thinks about things, you know. Like, oh, maybe I was wrong. Or maybe I wasn't wrong. Anyway, because that's how you act when you're thinking. But anyway, I think, you know, I said that swimming was not a sport, and then I said it was a sport. I, is it a sport, swimming? I think it's a pastime. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome and everything. It's, it's, it's like, you know, swimming, it, to me, it's a bit like pool and sex. <laughs> like, I'd, I'd rather do it than watch it. Do you know what I mean? Do <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd rather, like, especially like when people are, you know, especially with, with porn. You know, when people are, like, watching porn going, oh, and I'm like, well, they're having more fun than I am. <laughs> Clearly. Anyway, swimming, swimming's a sport now, it's in the Olympics. It's always been a sport. It's been a sport since back in Olympic times in ancient Greece. Anyway, the, all I'm saying is if swimming is a sport, then maybe Marco Polo should be a sport. <laughs> Why not? Get it included. Beach volleyball, Marco Polo, get all it. Frisbee, let's get them all in. I don't know how Marco Polo started. It's a, you know, it's a game, Marco Polo, the game where the blindfolded people in speedos in a pool groping for each other. It's like a party at Elton John's house kind of thing. <laughs> Marco Polo wasn't even a swimmer, you know. He was a 13th century Italian explorer. He discovered China. Well, that's how the Italians see it. The <laughs> Chinese are like, who was that Italian guy? I don't know. Well, you know, because Chinese culture had existed thousands of years before Marco Polo. And the Chinese have made huge uh, uh, contributions to the world, of course, of paper money, fireworks they did, writing, orange chicken. Now, orange chicken. <laughs> orange chicken is delicious. Uh, they had to try. There was a lot of trial and error involved. They were like, lemon pigeon. Nah, it's not right. Apple squirrel, uh, banana monkey, corn dog. No. And did you hear about this opening ceremony thing? Uh, and the, you know what, my Olympic ban is going very well. But do you remember, did you hear? Like the big news from China was the, uh, the adorable little girl that sang the song during the opening ceremonies. You know, she didn't do that. That's just me pretending I'm her. She, she was a lot better looking than that, clearly. You'd be like, why is there a hand singing a song? That's weird. Kind of interesting. Anyway, she sang the Chinese national anthem and uh, it turns out she was just lip syncing. And they had, you know, it was a very beautiful little girl and they felt that the other little girl who could actually sing wasn't beautiful enough, apparently. I mean, it was ridiculous. But, and I'm thinking, this is outrageous. I mean, if we can't trust an oppressive totalitarian dictatorship, <laughs> then who can we trust? I'm not buying any of this crap, by the way. I'm not buying any of it. You know, oh, everything's fine, you know. No, it's not fine. <laughs> Take that, political shows. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, we've, uh, we've given in. We are actually a big part of, uh, of the Olympics thing. Everyone's going nuts for the Olympics, and we have actually got a special correspondent in Beijing 
uh, and we, we have an exclusive report on the games. It's very exciting for us at the show. It's a very exciting time for us. Uh, it's time for Olympic highlights with John Tesh, everybody. John Tesh! Over in Michigan. By satellite out there to Beijing. Uh, how are the Olympics so far, John? Awesome! <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, that was good. We'll be right back with the emails, everybody. Emails when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the complete non-Olympic show. <laughs> My Olympic ban is beginning to bite. <laughs> I've talked non-stop about the Olympics for 20 minutes now. <laughs> All right, do we have time for an email, do we? There's always time for e all right there uh, this is from uh, andrew in winnipeg in manitoba 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 that's in canada which is a strange and mystical land to the north where they have this weird tradition of politeness i know Anyway, uh, Andrew in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba says, Hey there, Craig Guy. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. What would it take for you to do a week of shows in Winnipeg, Manitoba? Well, here's what it would take. You to stop calling me Craig Guy. <laughs> a week of shows in Winnipeg. I've been to Winnipeg. That was the time I shaved my entire body, actually. <laughs> It was, because what happened is I was in Winnipeg, it's, it, I don't know if you know this about Canada, it, gets, it snows up there and I was snowed in my hotel room. And what happened was I was in the hotel room, snowed in, couldn't get anywhere, and I was just shaving and I thought, I'll keep going. <laughs> and I did. I really did shave my entire body. About two, two, three days later, the itchiness was beyond imagining. Man, that is, never do that. I actually do it. <laughs> so, when I was there as well, I was doing this independent film. Uh, when, they say, when I say independent, I mean low budget that nobody saw. And, <laughs> and I, I, was, I did this stunt in the, in the film where I had to jump in the river and I jumped in the river and I cut my hand. And they said, oh, you have to go and get a shot, a tetanus shot. But it was 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. And the only place you could go and get a tetanus shot at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night in Winnipeg was the methadone clinic. And <laughs> so I had to go to the methadone clinic. And I was sitting there, and the methadone clinic was in a, a part of town that is just uh, pretty much all uh, native Canadians. You know, uh, all you know, the native Canadians, uh, uh, not all the native Canadians, just just the native Canadians that have got methadone problems. <laughs> Just, you know, those ones. And they, they, uh, they were there, and I came in, and I had to wait. And I didn't know, but apparently the Drew Carey show was very popular with heroin-addicted native Canadians. <laughs> and I used to be on that show. <laughs> I was very popular in there. They were like, it's, it's Mr. Wick. I'm like, hello, everybody. <laughs> That's kind of the story, actually. <laughs> Nothing happened after that. I got my methadone. Oh, her, I mean, uh, tetanus. <laughs> I would never do that. Are you kidding me? I could never understand why junkies, like, inject themselves. Like, are you nuts? It's like, so you have to get a shot and you die? <laughs> I mean, I like live and let live and all that, but that's just bad. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm sorry. Oh, you're mad at me because now I'm coming down on the side of not taking heroin and I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. Well, I, look, I'm going to say, I'm putting myself out in a limb. I think heroin's bad. I don't think you should take it. Yeah, yeah and I said it. <laughs> Unless... 
Unless, of course, you're a heroin addicted sponsor or on the board of CBS, in which case. <laughs> I probably should get off this now, shouldn't I? <laughs> All right, we've got to go. We'll be right back with Kiefer Sutherland, everybody. Kiefer Sutherland. We get one of them paparazzis in the studio, look. <laughs> Don't try and shoot up my skirt, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> my first guest tonight, uh, he's in the 24 show. He's got a new film, Mirrors, which is in the theaters on Friday. Take a look at this. It's very nice to see you. Thank you very I, much. Thank I, you. I almost forgot you are in fact Canadian. Yes. In many ways. Yes, and my I, people are going to get you for the yeah, stuff about Winnipeg. No, 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 I didn't mean anything. And the heroin. What? <laughs> and I'd like to say, don't do heroin. But yes, well. yeah, yeah. It was good of you to put yourself on a limb like that. I know, that. it's a controversial yeah. stance that I took. <laughs> it was. You know, people are going to say, really, Craig? I mean, a lot of people are enjoying it. No, no, I'm saying no. I'm coming down against good it. Good for you. Yeah, no, I'm down. Now, the, the, in, the, in the clip there, I'm looking at the... You shot... That's bad luck, shooting a mirror. Yes. Breaking it like that. Are you, are yeah. you worried about that? I am actually a little superstitious, but I, I made a deal with whatever mirror god there is out there. That, Satan? Uh, you made a deal with Satan, with maybe? <laughs> That uh, the director uh, actually made me do, uh, right, break okay. those mirrors, so all of it should be transferred back to him. And he's French, and he doesn't really care. So it's doesn't really care about anything if he's French, Not really. Much. No, he's like, I don't care. Shoot the mirror. Don't no, shoot the I don't mirror. Care. It's all right. Bad luck, good luck. It's no different. It's to no me. different to me. All I care about. <laughs> He's smoking. He's smoking. Uh, does he smoke, this French dude? He's actually the only French person I've actually ever met that does not smoke. No, the, lots yeah. of them don't smoke now. Really? Well, no, it's all changed in France. It was the last place, uh, and I am a smoker, and right. it, was, uh, it was the last place on the planet that I actually thought uh, would ever have the same kind of rules they have in the States where you can't smoke in a bar, you can't smoke inside. Yeah. Um, and they passed it, and it stuck. Yeah, no, that's yeah. it. No, now it's just yeah. uh, little pastries and coffee. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of anxiety. Really? <laughs> it's, time, it's time you were giving up the smoking, Kiefer, I think. Have you ever tried? <laughs> I think you might be right. Have you tried? Um, no, not really, no. Why, anything else first? Is that what you're thinking? I, I keep thinking I'm going to use it for a part one day. Nah. <laughs> no, you've got, you got to give up the smoke. It's very bad no, for you. I know. No, you've got to try yes. the hypnosis. We'll try it now, yes. all right? Knock it off. <laughs> the next time I'll you go for a cigarette... I'll give you a in about an hour. <laughs> actually, the, the funny time, actually, um, my daughter, when she was about 13 years old, came home with a picture of a lung and stuck it on the fridge. Right. And that was the closest I came to quitting, and then I just decided it was my fridge, and I can just take anything down I wanted. So. <laughs> And that was the end of putting stuff up on the fridge. You know, I like, uh, I like parenting with boundaries. Yes. That's right. <laughs> that, you know, I did the same with my father when I was a kid, and then I ended up smoking later on. But I've, but I've stopped yeah. for 10 years. Really? Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah, you I know how stop. you stop? Stop putting them in your mouth and lighten them. Boom! It was that simple. Boom! It was that simple. Yeah. Well, they tried that one, too. Yeah. They stole the cigarettes and then the lighters. But you know what? I, I noticed that the desire, this is absolutely the truth, the desire for a cigarette left me, whether or not I had a cigarette. That's what I noticed. Like after three or four minutes, the, like the craving for a cigarette, yeah. I'd be like, oh, and I'd be on to something yeah. else. So, so if I could get through the craving for the cigarette, then it'd be all right. I'm turning wow. into Dr. Phil a little bit, am I? Not? <laughs> three or four minutes, and you found something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> You're a pretty interesting cat. Oh, yeah. yeah. See me, I'd have torn the house apart, and then I'd have st broken into someone else's house, see if they smoked. <laughs> saying I didn't tear the house apart, oh, okay. I found something else to do, like tearing the house apart. There you go. Okay. No, no. 
Now, uh, the, uh, what else have you been up to then? What about the 24? Have you been doing that? busy with that, yeah. Are there going to be a movie of that? There's going to be a 24 We're going to have eventually one day, um, if, if people are still interested by oh, then. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, but as, uh, Look at you. Yeah, I think so. There you are. I think so. Um, it's so hard for the writers uh, to just even get through the season. Uh, right. Are they not very good? Because the show's great. It's, they're, they're very good. It's just it's the equivalent of making 12 films a year. And, right. Um, and then they have to come up with a whole new idea for the, in the break for, this, for the next year. Um, so we all agreed... Uh, just to preserve the series, that it would be best if they focused on that. Yeah. And then when the series is done, we would we would uh, embark on the film. Didn't you do one in? Uh, didn't you do a, like a TV version of it? We did. Though? We did a two hour two hour prequel to season seven. Is that um, the one you shot in South Africa? That we shot in Africa. Oh, right. Africa, and Africa, or South Africa? South Africa. Right. Okay. Is there a difference? Yes. What one part of it is in the middle, and then the there's that inside. part of the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there's that part of the top. It's like going to North can't... Africa. I... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've known you for many years, and the fact that I walked into that, yeah, I deserve. Yeah. I deserve. Yeah, um, yeah we, sh we shot down there for about three to four weeks, and right. it's one of the best things we've ever done. Uh, fantastic cast, uh, Bobby Carlyle, oh, right. who's he's, he's yeah, Scottish, yeah. Scottish man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and one of the finest actors I've ever worked with, John yeah. Voight, Sherry Jones, just a phenomenal cast. Did you see any hippopotamuses? I did, actually. <laughs> they're, they're deadly. And so, and the wildebeest apparently are pretty deadly too. Well, this is what people don't understand because they think that, you know, the South Africa... The little ears make them look cute. Yeah, and they've got the big... Yeah. And when they saw them in that movie, they were wearing tutus and dancing. <laughs> they think, oh, it, that's the biggest killer of I think of I did humans. a voice in that film. Did you really? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, well, anyway, that's what I'm saying is that if the hippos find out about that, they'll be after you. I know. Because they, they could have got a very strong union. <laughs> My whole evening now is just about trying to derail him. You have to <laughs> this. And I've been trying this for six years, and it's impossible no, no, to do. No. And, and see, what I'm saying is the hippopotamuses are, are they're deadly killers. Yes, they are. Deadly killers. Yeah, they are. Did anyone get uh, killed by a hippopotamus we actually, when you we were went, there? No, no. We managed to survive that. Um, but we went on a day safari, and... Uh, which is not quite a legitimate safari because it's uh, about 400 acres and the animals are roaming free, but they are surrounded by a huge fence. Right, so we're pretty um, much talking L.A. Zoo, really. Uh, with no bars. Right, okay. Right. Why, well, you, you, like, you like to have a bar when That's you go on safari? Because <laughs> we don't have to go there. More we don't one. have to go there. So, well, this is funny. This is right. funny. So, John Kassar, our director, is actually... We found a group of lions, and they're way off in the distance, but he has this unbelievable telephoto lens. Right. And so he's taking pictures, and the camera must have let off some kind of a glint or a reflection, and the lion looks at it and charges. And John, through his camera, thinks it's on him. And he backs up, and he hits the back end of a railing and flips over and gives himself a huge black eye. And the lion is still quite far away from him. And, uh, so that was, and it, and it was horrific because not one person went to help him. There was about nine of us. And all of us were taking pictures, and then all of a sudden we were just taking pictures <laughs> of our friend on the ground. He's bleeding from his eye. Uh, but that was, that was my safari. Yeah, well, well it's, it's fascinating. I must remember not to rely on you whenever I'm charged by a lion yes. in future. Which is unlikely, although I've had a couple of bear attacks in West Hollywood, but I'll be all right. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm done now, you derailed me, we're done. But when does the, when the movie comes out on Friday? The movie comes out on Friday. And Amy, Amy Smart's in it. Amy Smart's she, in it, Paula here, Patton. Right? Uh, just a wonderful cast, directed by Alex Aja, who did The Hills Have Eyes. He's French. And yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, I, I know that about All yeah. right, we're going to see it. Keep our Sutherland, everybody. Cheers. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hey, went Scottish uh, country dancing with me, this is how it would look. <laughs> remember last week we had Snake Week? Remember it was awesome, everybody loved it, Snake Week, oh gosh, it's never been better, what a great success. But, uh, but I, I hope they never have snakes on the show ever again. Well, we're, we, we'll just, we thought we'd bring one back, just for Tuesday, because, yeah. Now, isn't this cute? This is Mike's snake. He's six. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. 
I don't know what he's doing watching this show if he's six years old. <laughs> Uh, my next guest is an actress. She's in the new film Trans Siberian, which is in theatres now. Take a look. Mm. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Kate Mara, everybody. Kate Mara. <laughs> to our show. Thank you. I wore, a, I wore a special snake for you. Oh, how lovely. It's not snake yeah. week, but thank you for wearing it. <laughs> snake week was last week, but can we see your snake? Look at that. What a lovely... Don't I have nice hands? You do. Actually, look, don't I have nice oh, hands yeah. better, maybe? I have nice <laughs> hands. Ah! This is really fun already. No, I know. Sorry. Hey, what does Trans-Siberia mean? Is that a drag queen from Russia? How did you... I can't even believe you knew that. Uh, yeah, no, I know a lot of things about drag queens. Uh, now, <laughs> are you, what, what happens in this movie then? You're on a train? Yes, we're on the, the Trans-Siberian, it's called. Oh, that's um, what it's called, yeah. Yeah, right. uh, two couples on a train and um, just sort of about how everybody isn't quite who they seem to be. Oh, did someone Didn't get Didn't I look mysterious You in did, yeah, in the clip. You yeah. had the, like the hat on and everything and the smoking yeah. and I'm like, oh, I, I have no idea what's going you on. You like that look? That I, goth kind of sexy... I do, what, sexy women look? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I do, I do yeah. like a bit of smoldery sexiness, yeah. So I did a film last year in Scotland in your hometown, Glasgow. Really? You did, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, you look, yeah. you look fine. <laughs> Did you have a nice time there? I love it there. Really? Yeah. Where, whereabouts in Glasgow were you living? Where did you stay? Um, I stayed right near the Botanic Gardens. That's where I used to live, in the West End. No, really? Yeah, you know that pub, the ubiquitous <laughs> chip? <laughs> the you... pub, that pub, of yeah. course. Yeah. I, was the, yeah. I was the bartender in that really? bar. Really? Yeah, I had no. to throw myself out some nights. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that Ashton Lane where everybody drinks? Yes. That's where I was the bartender. I drank right? there, you know, pretty much 24-7. So you left school and you went straight to rehab then? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not there yet, no, clearly. No, no. Yeah. no, you have to do something hugely <laughs> embarrassing first. Tonight, maybe you're not. <laughs> Now, did, you, did they take care of you in Scotland? Did you have a nice... People there aren't nice. No, I don't. No. Yeah. So, no, yeah, I, lo I love that. The people there are hilarious. They're just incredibly dry sense of humours and... Yeah. Dry, dry, and... dry is not the word I would use, but yeah. <laughs> I don't mean, and did you did you like the food? Did you enjoy the? Did, um, uh, you want me to talk about haggis? Is that where this? No, is going? I don't want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I don't haggis. either. At no, all. I don't want to. I talk actually about. did like it though. Well, haggis, yeah. vegetarian haggis is nice. What is the point of vegetarian haggis? Uh, save a sheep, save a <laughs> life. That's what. <laughs> That's the point of vegetarian height. Of vegetarian height is like oatmeal and, um, you know, crunchy that goodness. It's disgusting. It's good. It's good. Vegetarian. Mm. It's nice. There's Next nobody, time I'm there, I'll try it. Nobody gets hurt. <laughs> McSween's vegetarian haggis. Try It's really good. Okay, I'll look yeah. into it. Now, are you, uh, Mara, is that an Irish name? I'm Irish, yeah. 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 Because I know some people called O'Mara, but I've never met a Mara. I think we used to be O'Mara. And they took the O away at Ellis Island? I, don't, I made that up. I've, All right, okay. I think. <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't know. So, but have you ever been to Ireland? No. It's great. Is it? Much like Scotland. I figured ways. Scotland, Ireland. It's kind of it's kind of, it's kind of true. You know, it really is. The, the Irish are just Scottish people that can't swim. <laughs> I said it. That's right. I said it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But Not people don't true. really care that much if you if you've been to Ireland. They're like, oh, that's nice. If you've been to Scotland, everyone kind of goes, oh, Braveheart, I love. Oh yeah, Braveheart. Yeah, that was like going to school for me. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding you. No, no, it was. Do you ever see the Lord of the Rings movies? Yeah. Uh, you know when they go through the mines of Mordor? That was like me going to school in Scotland. It was a normal day for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Where are you from? Where? New York. Okay, well, you know that. Yeah. yeah. Which part I grew up you... in the ghetto. Did you really? Yeah. Where, where's that? <laughs> Bedford, New York, actually. Oh, yeah, boy, ghetto. that must have been tough with Horses the leafy wet. just running wild. Yeah, the, the leafs could come and get you at any point. <laughs> yeah. Those country lanes can get scary at night, you know, you might meet Ichabod Crane <laughs> coming down there. It's rough. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, why? I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah. 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 That was so weird. 
<laughs> Wait, I think something passed through the roof. Do you really believe in ghosts? Yeah, I do. Really? Do you have, have a good ghost one? story or something? No, 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 no just going? That. Well, oh. I thought, I, I tell you where, where my mind went is like, I was thinking about leafy green lanes, and then I said Ichabod Crane, and then I thought of the headless ah, horseman. Ah, I got it. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if she believes in ghosts. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I've been haunted a few times. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I grew up in Bedford, right. and I grew up um, on a street called Indian Hill, mm -hmm. well, off of the street called Indian Hill. They moved the headstones, but they didn't move the bodies! I've seen that movie! <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what happened? Yeah. It was an I old... had some serious, serious little kids in my dreams coming to me saying, help me, help me get... Wow. I... But that might be just bad dreams. That I... doesn't necessarily <laughs> technically count as being haunted. I don't know. I, I, think, know. I think my dressing room here is haunted. Why? I don't know. I'm just scared to be in it alone. <laughs> really? Do you need someone to help you? Maybe just a cuddle. <laughs> I hear Scotsmen are really, really cuddly. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> you were in Scotland for three months. You know Scots being a very, very Because I know my countrymen, and there's no way you got three months in Glasgow without getting unscathed in some way. I have no response to that. Yeah, OK. Well, it's good to know things are back to normal over there. Now, um, <laughs> would you go back there, do you think? Oh, yeah, I loved it there. Yeah, no I would live there in a second. Really? I loved it. I loved the, the horrible weather. It was... Yeah, it's bad, yeah. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, and no, you know, I... one second it's sunny, the next second it's, it's pouring rain. And, but everybody there is just kind of, oh, it's sunny for 10 minutes. And they, that makes their week. It's... You know, once my father, we were in the back garden, it was a sunny day. And um, he was sitting in the back garden and he was like sitting on a deck chair. And he said, hi, son. I went out to see him. I wasn't living there at the time. I went to see him and he said, lovely day, isn't it, son? I went, yeah, yeah it's very nice, dad. And he went, you know the best thing about it? I said, no, I don't. I've just listened to the weather report and uh, it's <laughs> raining in England. <laughs> Did you, uh, we have to cut that out, I just remember people <laughs> that actually said. So. Do you, you can beep it or something, you do something with your technical thing. Do you, they make it like the, you don't like, you don't like British? What, the English? Yeah. yeah it, they're okay, apart from the 300 years of <laughs> colonial oppression. <laughs> apart from that, it's good. So now you're American. Yeah. Do you like football? Yeah, I'm okay with it, yeah. That's it? I quite like it. I quite like it. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 Who's, what's your team? Uh, San Diego Superchargers. I used to have a little song there. <laughs> Superchargers. I'm, I'm not just Chargers. <laughs> Superchargers. Um, I'm a huge Giants fan. Why? Well, you're from New York. That'd yeah. be why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love the sexy players on that team. Really? Yeah. I, the sex is not what I think about <laughs> when I see football. But really? then again, I'm a guy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I like their uniforms. So do I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've said too much. <laughs> We, we're done here, you know, we're way over time. We have yeah. to stop this. We could keep going. We could, know? but we have to go. I could, you and I, I could, could take you to your, I could help you in your dressing room, get rid of the ghosts. Don't you woo, you'll, you'll shame her and put her off. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I'm... <laughs> All right, we have to go. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> It's the little extra bit that makes it real. <laughs> I, uh, what have we learned on the show? Well, you know, we learned that my Olympics boycott isn't really working. <laughs> I talk about the Olympics all the time. I'm watching the Olympics. I'm fascinated by the Olympics. Uh, we learned that we have a, a correspondent, John Tesh, at the Olympics. <laughs> and that's about it, I guess. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, you know what I did? I cured Kiefer Sutherland of smoking. <laughs> so you're welcome, Sutherland. Good night, everybody. Good night.